If you've been trying things like foam rolling and stretching to help release a tight IT band and you haven't seen much success, this video is for you. The issue is, is that if you were to Google or look up on YouTube, what are the best ways to fix a tight IT band? You're gonna see a bunch of stretches and rolling activities, myofascial release, like getting on a foam roller and then just kind of trying to roll that area out but that usually doesn't result in long-term solutions because the IT band is being affected by the position of the pelvis and rolling and stretching aren't usually fixing those things. And just as a side note, the IT band is not muscle, it is fascia. And fascia is this incredibly strong connective tissue. And laying on a foam roller and rolling it out isn't really going to give you nearly enough pressure. You need to alter the tissue quality or the position of the IT band. It's so incredibly strong. And just a little foam rolling usually isn't going to release that area. That's why many people do it and they might feel better for a couple of minutes but then they go right back to where they were. The IT band attaches at the top of the pelvis at the iliac crest and it runs down to the outside of our knee. It provides a lot of lateral stabilization of the hip and again it's connective tissue it's not muscle however muscles around the outside of the thigh are going to be influenced by the position of the pelvis which also is going to affect the IT band itself. Now, there are two main muscle groups we're gonna be talking about here. The first is gonna be the TFL. The TFL also attaches within the IT band itself. And this muscle helps create internal rotation of the femur, but also it can weakly create abduction of the hip as well. But we're gonna be focusing on the internal rotation aspect. We also have the vastus lateralis, which attaches at the greater trochanter and also down at the knee as well. Now what's important to consider is that when the pelvis is in a forward position of anterior pelvic tilt, if you will, there is leverage for these muscles to act as primary internal rotators of the hip because in their shortened position, they now have leverage because the femur is now in a position where it can be pulled into internal rotation more easily because of the position of the pelvis. When the pelvis is in more of a neutral state, meaning it's more like this, then those muscles don't have as much leverage to work as internal rotators. These muscles are your gluteus medius, specifically the front fibers, your hamstrings, your inner hamstrings in particular, and your obliques, which help create that internal rotation of the hip. So what should normally happen when we're walking is as we transition from heel strike to mid stance, we're going to go from an externally rotated position of the hip and femur into an internally rotated position of the hip and femur. And the muscles that help secure us in this internally rotated position are your anterior gluteus medius, your inner hamstrings, your obliques, and also, yes, your TFL. But when we're in a forward position like this, the TFL gets more leverage to create internal rotation, more so than something like the anterior gluteus medius. This applies to more than just walking too. Let's say you're someone who likes to hit the gym and lift, and you do a lot of squats. If you see people that have a lot of anterior pelvic tilt, and they're using their TFLs and vastus lateralis as more of their internal rotators, they tend to have really jacked and prominent outer quads relative to the rest of their quads because those quads are trying to act as internal rotators. So the goal would be to restore genuine internal rotation in a neutral pelvis position because if we can do that, then again, we're not giving the pelvis a reason to move forward and stay forward to find that internal rotation strategy. So what we can do because the TFL creates internal rotation and hip flexion is put ourselves in hip extension and external rotation, which is the inverse. And then we can work ourselves into internal and external rotation from that hip extended position. But we gotta get this hip extension back first. And here's a really good way you can do that. The setup for this, we're gonna be in this A-frame position with about this much hip bend. And we have our feet flat on a surface that's about three to four inches elevated. And we have a very light band around the top of the knees. We do not want it to be too heavy, so generally lighter is better here. And what we're gonna do is initiate this by keeping our feet flat and squeezing our glutes consciously to create a little posterior pelvic tilt. So this is one of the few times I'll ever cue you to actually consciously squeeze your glutes the entire time during an exercise. What that should do is get your tailbone off of the floor, but your low back should remain entirely flat throughout this entire exercise. So what we're gonna do is maintain that glute squeeze and the hips are gonna stay off of the ground, but the low back remains flat. 
Consciously keep that glute squeeze as you go outside with your knees and roll the outside of your feet. The inside of your feet can roll off, that's totally fine. And then go to your end range where you feel like you're not gonna feel your glutes anymore, or you're gonna feel something other than your glutes, or your low back comes off of the floor. And then you're going to slowly control as you exhale, come back together. Don't let them fall in together with your knees, let them come together as you control them coming in together. And then you're just gonna go inhale out, and then exhale through your mouth as you go back together. Facilitating these inverse joint actions is an example of how we're really addressing the root cause of why these muscles and tissues are tight instead of just rolling them out and hoping for the best and not educating the body how to move out of the position that's causing the issue. This is a staple principle within my programs like my beginner body restoration program. A primary goal of that program is to get the pelvis and other joints in more of a neutral position so that way we can have better access to move into internal or external rotation as needed as opposed to just doing a bunch of stretches and a bunch of other foam rolling drills that don't really educate the body to move into better positions and hold them. Now we need to restore genuine internal rotation. And what we need to do here is make sure there's actually enough space for the femur to rotate into internal rotation. A lot of people don't have a lot of hip internal rotation when you assess them. So we want to improve that a little bit in most cases. And we can do that by laying on a foam roller and doing a specific rolling drill where we are pushing the femur back into the hip socket. And we're doing that nice and gently and oscillating on this outside edge right here of the trochanter to help push the femur back into the hip and that should open up some space. To set up for this, we wanna be in a pretty straight leg position on the leg that we're going to roll, which is the down leg. And this leg is completely relaxed. We're gonna bring this leg over the top. Again, it's just chilling there, it's hanging out. Not much muscle tension at all. And we need to place the foam roller where our trochanter is, which is the top of our femur. That bone right here on the side of your hip, the top of it right here should be on the foam roller. And again, you're completely relaxed. Now we need to roll about one inch every two seconds, really, really slow, way slower than most people actually foam roll. Because in order to change the shape of the bone in terms of how it sits in the hip socket, we need to go really, really slow because bones take a lot of time and they're much slower to change than muscle tissue. So we wanna go incredibly slow here. And we're just rolling about two to three inches below the head of that trochanter and then rolling back up to it very, very slowly. And then that's all we're really gonna do. We're gonna breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth, staying really relaxed. This leg stays relaxed. This leg stays pretty relaxed. We're just gently supporting our body weight with that down arm right there and just chilling, staying relaxed and just put on some TV and hang out. Now, not everyone improves internal rotation in the same way in the same exercise. So if you want other options to improve your internal rotation, I'll link a couple more exercises down below in the description. From there, we can keep the pelvis in a neutral position and then educate the internal rotators with a little bit of band resistance to do their job and own that new internal rotation space we have created. We are in this prone position here with a very light band at the top of the ankle or the very bottom of the whole leg. And then we have a slightly stronger band here above the level of the knee, just above it. And we are just passively holding a ball or object here that allows us to keep our knees in line with our hip and also our foot. So we got a foam roller underneath his stomach here, which is going to passively put him in a neutral pelvic position. If this was not here, he would overarch his low back and that would not be a good position to recruit these muscles of internal rotation. So using something about this thick underneath the stomach and very lowest ribs is going to be the ideal position, not underneath the hip and not too high on the sternum. Right about here is where we're looking for. Now, what we want to do is pull these knees to about a 90 degree knee bend, right about here. And then we want to slightly turn the toes in just a little bit. And now Trevor, what I'll have you do is maintain this degree of knee bend and the toes going in and just rotate your legs outward to the side. He should feel the muscles on the side of his hip working here, specifically his glute med area. Where that is, is that's right about here. This is where he should be feeling it. Now, 
he's going to inhale, spread apart, exhale, come back. And all the while he's making sure that he can maintain this ball in between his knees. And that's ensuring that his knees aren't spreading out and the movement and rotation is coming from here. The most common mistake in this activity is people will get tired and their knees start to extend and they're not going to be able to rotate out nearly as far and they're not gonna be recruiting these muscles nearly as much. So we want to be at that 90 degree bend the whole time. And also people will get tired and start to arch through the low back more and more. And then again, they're gonna put the pelvis in a bad position which is going to compromise the recruitment of those muscles we're trying to target. There's another great example of a drill like this that you can do if you don't have access to a band, which I will link down below in the description as well. So to summarize, the IT band is just responding to the position of the pelvis. Now, if it's really tight, then other muscles on the outside of the hip are also going to be tight and trying to create internal rotation in a compensatory manner. What we want to do is bring the pelvis into more of a neutral position, and we want to get hip extension back to do that. We want to make sure that we can facilitate hip extension and external rotation first, and then we want to open up space for internal rotation. From there, we want to educate ourselves to own that new internal rotation space with muscles that help control that internal rotation together. The first drill you wanna do for about 15 reps. The second drill you wanna do for about one to two minutes, and the third drill I would do for about 15 slow reps as well.